Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm going to call to order the September 30th, 2020 evening meeting for the Carroll County Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, can we establish a quorum, please? Ms. Cheatwood? Here. Mr. Hoff? Here. Mr. Canale? Here. Mr. Wathers? Mr. Soyson? Wasn't Richard on here? Mr. Soyson? Ms. Kirkner? Mr. Gosnell? Here. Commissioner Rothstein? Here. Secretary Eisenberg? Here. Ms. Chair, please let the record reflect that five members are present and we do have a quorum. Thank you. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, we're going to do a quick review and approval of the agenda. I take it there's no changes? There are no changes to the agenda. I'll make a motion for approval of the agenda. Can I get a second, please? Gene Canelli, I'll second it. I had my mic off. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll move on to the review and approval of the September 15th, 2020 minutes. Any edits? No edits, I'll make a motion for approval. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I see Jeff is online now too. Yeah, I was gonna say, let the record show that Mr. Soyson and Mr. Walters are here. Good evening. And then I just got a text from Janice saying that she's waiting for Chris to let her in, whatever that might mean. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, we'll move on to item number six, the administrative report, Secretary Eisenberg. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here this evening. Tonight is the third out of our four comprehensive by request um, meetings regarding final recommendations from the Planning Commission. Um, just a few things, if you'll notice um, from our last meeting and your suggestions, we added in new guidelines to have an orderly meeting. I'm just going to review those really quickly. That speakers wishing to address the planning commission are asked to fill out the online form. So far we have received 11 uh, people that want to speak using the online form on the four properties that are the topic of discussion this evening. Comments will be strictly limited to three minutes per speaker. Our control group um, is setting the timer and they have a uh, notification that will sound when the three minutes is up. So we ask everybody who would wish to speak and make a comment, please stick to three minutes. Citizen testimony is not a question and answer session. Questions should be directed to the staff after the meeting. And as always, please feel free to email me, the Department of Planning or any of our staff, and we will get back to you with answers to your questions. Disparaging comments or personal attacks will not be tolerated. If any individual fails to comply with these rules, the Planning and Zoning Commission Chair may call the person out of order and may require him or her to leave the meeting. So again, let's keep our social decorum this evening. These meetings are hard enough. Um, and so we were trying to make them flow much better and to have an easier way to administer um, public comments. So I hope this is helpful. It's not meant to be a hindrance but meant to make the evening flow more smoothly. Nextly, I would like to welcome our new county attorney, Jim Allman. Um, right now, he's going to be shadowing Michelle Ostrander for the next several meetings. So he becomes familiar with this group and what we do, not only in the Planning and Zoning Commission, but the Department of Planning. So Jim, would you like to say a few words? Uh, yes, um, Linda, thank you um, so much for um, 
the invitation to this and um, they were excited to be um, a part of the Carroll County team and I look forward to working with um, all of you in the future. Welcome aboard. Yeah, thank you. Nice to have you on board. We're happy to have Jim. Um, we've had some conversations and I was part of the interview process to bring him on board and he has a real passion for land use and planning. So I'm very excited to pick his brain as we move through some of this process. So I think he'll be a great addition um, to our team. So again, welcome Jim. Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you. And that is all I have for my administrative report. Thank you. Okay, we're moving right along to item number seven. We're gonna continue on our comprehensive rezoning um, and finalize our recommendations for the buy the quest properties. Okay, so if the control room can give me control of the screen, I'll run through the properties that are being discussed this evening. And then we do have several speakers. So what I'm going to do, what I'm gonna do is call the speakers in order by topic. So as we do the first one on the Colburn Holver Bay property, I will call uh, the people to speak that are signed up for that particular property. Then I'll move on and again, as we move forward, I will call public speakers um, for each time that we are um, going over that particular item. Okay, so can you all see my screen? Right, I'm gonna go ahead and shut my camera off to save um, bandwidth. Yeah. Okay, so again, we're gonna be going over four properties this evening. The properties are the um, property down in Mount Airy, 0030, which is the Colburn Holver Bay property. The next is 0007, and that is located along Old Westminster Pike, outside of the Westminster area in between Finksburg and Westminster, and that is Playtime Corporation. The next is 0023, that is Finch Services off of Maryland 31. Um, and then the final is 0027. And I'm having a hard time finding that one. But I'll come back to the main, oh, I'm sorry. That is North Carroll School, the new facility, not to that prior one, which we heard the other week. So again, these are the listing of the four properties. 003 Planning Commission at their August 18th meeting gave a favorable recommendation. 0007 on the August 18th meeting, Planning Commission had an unfavorable recommendation. 0023 at the August 18th meeting had a favorable recommendation. And 0027 at the August 18th meeting, the, the, the request was for C2 you had a favorable recommendation for C1, and that's again for the North Carroll School. Again, this map just shows the properties um, in the Liberty Reservoir watershed. All of the properties, but the Holver and Bay property, are fall under that agreement that we discussed at a prior meeting. You received a comment letter covering those properties. So the first property is EC13. 20200030 Colburn Holver Bay request is conservation to employment campus. The property is located along Ridge Road, Maryland 27 to the east side. Um, the boundary is changed a little bit from what was originally submitted because a parcel um, was taken out of the request. They resubdivided during this process. Um, as well as we had updated boundary information from State Department of Assessments and Taxation since the master plan. So we are in the process of making final adjustments to our parcel data regarding that. So that's why you see the hatched coming out of the blue line. The blue lined area with the red hatched internally is the extent of the rezoning request. Staff gave this a favorable recommendation because it is consistent with the future land use designation, goals and implementation strategies of the 2014 master plan that was also amended in 2019. 
and the future land use of the adjacent property. The property immediately to the south is the Harrison and Lyshear property, which is designated office park in the Mount Airy municipal growth area and has a future zoning designation as well, which is very similar to our employment campus designation. It was designated employment campus and is adjacent to another property of similar size with an office park employment designation. As I said, it's within the Mount Airy growth, uh, town growth area. And this um, property is immediately outside of that municipal growth area of the town. It is sufficient size to be developed as an employment campus if infrastructure is in place. Currently, this property is not in the planned water or sewer service area, which could limit the ability to develop this property to its maximum extent as an employment campus at this time. We've had a lot of calls, comments, and concerns regarding the rezoning of this particular piece of property. The town of Mount Aries Planning Commission is currently discussing and taking public comment on the annexation of the Harrison Lyshear property, which is just to the south. It was stated at Mount Airy September 28th Planning Commission meeting that the council vote on the annexation is estimated to be in April of 2021. The main Mount Airy Town Council and Planning Commission have expressed concerns regarding inadequate infrastructure access to the property and future wells needed and the impact on public support for the annexation of the Lacier property to the south. So they urged the Carroll County Planning Commission to consider waiting on the Harrison Lakeshore annexation outcome before approving the request for rezoning of this particular property. And that came from John Breeding, um, from, he was the director of planning and zoning on behalf of the town. So the blue turquoise properties to the south are the Harrison and Lyshear properties that are within the town's municipal growth area. These are the properties that are the subject of the annexation request separate from our comprehensive rezoning request. As I said earlier, the blue hatched above um, with the red hatched and internal is the request for this comprehensive rezoning. Nine comments have been received, written and oral. Those comments were forwarded to you, the written portion um, in your packets yesterday in opposition to the rezoning. Concerns cited include increase in traffic, impact on adjacent wells, inconsistency of employment uses with large lot residential subdivision, inadequate public infrastructure, cost to wildlife and other natural resources, no need for more office development, disruption of the community balance, and reduced property values. So again, at the August 18th Planning Commission meeting, there was a provisional Planning Commission recommendation of favorable. And that is all the information um, that I have as staff regarding this. And we do have several people who have called um, wishing to speak this evening and give comments. Um, Ms. Cheatwood, Chair, are you, uh, <laughs> Chairperson uh, Cheatwood, are you ready to take comment? Trying to fix my, sorry, trying to fix my camera. Yes, please. So I'll go ahead and call the first person. So on the line with us tonight is Mayor Pat Rockenberg from the town of Mount Airy who wishes to speak. Mayor Rockenberg, you have the floor. Yes, yeah. yes, thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, I'd like to compliment you on your opening comments to uh, ensure civility during these hearings. Uh, we're going to have to borrow them from you. My name is Patrick Rockenberg, and I serve as the mayor of the town of Mount Airy, and I have the pleasure to speak on behalf of many concerned citizens uh, regarding uh, this rezoning. I'm actually very surprised to hear it's already favorable. Uh, some of the concerns that you've heard, and you'll hear some questions, I don't expect answers. Uh, the partial question does not have an existing or planned infrastructure to my knowledge, but the original staff report references existing or planned infrastructure. Normally before anything is changed like this, you should know what you're doing. Because if you change it and then you can't develop it, you've just created a problem. Uh, getting in and out of the site is a critical component. Uh, Route 27 is a major corridor. I realize there will be traffic studies. I realize they will peel off. Uh, but has the waiver been granted by the State Highway Administration? If you don't get these things, there's no sense to rezone. So I think you're moving too quickly to rezone. 
Uh, has there been water exploration on site? From what I'm hearing, no. Again, why rezone until you know what you're doing? Now, we are considering a parcel, 259 acres, but we know about the water. We're going to do a traffic study, and all these issues would be addressed prior. Uh, to hear about this new property that would be adjacent to it, you're really going to pull of our municipal boundaries too far, and you're going to put too much of a load on the town of Mount Airy and the citizens that surround us. We would really expect you at the very least, uh, I would have to say you shouldn't do it at all, but at the very least, I would wait to discussions and plans and see how the operations turn out for Leisure Harrison. Because at this point, if you are to rezone that, you are going to hurt, cripple, or change uh, what may happen at Leisure Harrison, which is something I think that uh, is in everybody's closer interest that does connect the town of Mount Airy. Uh, we are connected to that property, but if you're going to connect us all the way to Taylorsville, that's the problem. And it's not consistent with uh, communities that have like to have their own uh, green factors around them. So uh, I appreciate you giving me this opportunity to speak and uh, thank you for all you do for the community. And I hope you do this for the community and do not rezone this property, please. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Brandon. I do not have a last name, but if Brandon could come on the line, please. Hi, this is this is Brandon. Can you guys hear me? Could you take your name um, for the record and your address, please? Yes, this is uh, Brandon Rakes. Uh, I live in Falling Green on 3711 uh, Falling Green Way. Um, thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak uh, this evening. Um, I've lived in Mount Airy for 20 years. I was in Nottingham uh, for uh, a portion, 17 years of those, and then moved to to, Notting, uh, to Falling Green. Um, I looked at the property behind me. This this property falls right behind my, my house, um, and it, I saw that it was conservation. I wasn't expecting it to be, uh, you know, changed or rezoned. I do not want it to be rezoned. Um, I'm concerned um, about what they're doing with uh, the Harrison Leisure property, which is 250 acres. Do we need another 100 acres developed? I don't think so. Um, this property backs up directly to my parcel. I have concerns of light pollution. Um, I, it's a small uh, tree line that's between my house and that property. So it's during the winter, the leaves are gone. I'm gonna be able to see the lights. Um, also concerned about traffic. We have a heck of a time pulling out of our neighborhood as it is today. Um, with all the traffic and I have younger kids that are learning to drive, which is a great concern of mine. Um, I've also tried to pull out a windsong way, which is right in the curve of where the entrance to this property is. And I do not go that way. I usually go up one street just so I can get, get out. Um, I think with COVID, this has changed the way that people have worked for the foreseeable future. Yes, COVID will go away, hopefully. Um, but I work for a global company and we're reducing our footprint and for office space uh, by like 70%. So I can't see how building uh, uh, additional buildings for workspace when we have plenty of vacant office space within Carroll County. So I do not think it's needed. Um, let's see, uh, you know, other companies like Google and Facebook have already announced that they're allowing a majority of their staff to work from home. So I think, you know, the landscape of working from home has changed, you know, forever. Um, I'm concerned about the impact on wildlife. I'm also concerned about crime. What about in the middle of the night when people come to hang out? Uh, is, is, is there going to be patrols to be able to keep crime out and drug deals being done in the middle of the night or possibly, you know, robbing our houses? Um, I'm concerned about the impact of my property value. I'm also worried about the water supply as well. So uh, I ask that you do not rezone this property. I'd like my town to stay small, like when I moved here. Uh, I don't want it to become Columbia, Gaithersburg, or Clarksville. Clarksville, or Berg. Uh, that's about all I had. So again, thank you for uh, letting me speak. I appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. The next speaker is Dale Rice. Yeah, Rice, if you can uh, 
identify yourself and uh, your address for the record. Dale Rice, if you would wish to speak. Well, I'm gonna to go to the next person and I'll come back and ask for Dale Rice again. Um, Marianne Costa, Marianne Costa, if you're on the line, please introduce yourself and your um, address for the record. Mary Costa, if you can please announce yourself. Okay, I'll come back to that person as well. I'm gonna move on to Sarah Hip. Sarah Yes, Hip. hello. Yes, finally. Yes, okay. um, you can also give us your address for the record. Sure. Uh, my name is Sarah Hip, and I live at 3801 Boatler Road in Mount Airy, Maryland. Um, I have lived in Mount Airy for um, about 10 years, and it was just recently that many of us um, on this road and on the adjoining properties and uh, communities that we learned about the possible rezoning of this parcel 20 from conservation to employment campus. Um, let me begin by saying, along with many others on Boat Road and Mount Airy, we oppose the rezoning of this property. My first concern is that these meetings were not properly posted for public involvement. Um, no signs that I know of were posted along Route 27, where the property currently stands. And um, from what I hear for a lot of the people on Falling Green in that neighborhood, uh, which that property does abut their backyard. Um, it wasn't until further investigation of the Harrison Lies Here property that we even found out about this possible rezoning uh, with the county. Uh, many residents are strongly against this rezoning and wish to speak, but being given that there was little time to hear about it, and get the word out. And with the current situation of the COVID pandemic, it is making it very, very difficult, if not impossible for the people that it is affecting to voice their concerns. I request that an extension be given and that more notice be given to allow for further comments. My second concern is that the awesome town we live in is will be changed forever. Mount Airy is very special and very different than any York town in Maryland. We were voted number nine in the best towns to raise a family. And that is why I, along with many other families have specifically moved here. We've moved here to get away from our job, to get away from the hustle and bustle of traffic and lights and overcrowding. So there is no need for outside employment here for this campus. It is hard enough for our current small businesses to find workers and to afford to even stay open. And this was even before the pandemic. Um, I am a parent of an employed teenager and I will tell you that I uh, feel safe sending her to a small family owned business and would prefer that and prefer to support that type of business and not an employment campus type of atmosphere. Lastly, this development would be an unnecessary strain on the environment, like it has been stated already. The water on this area, um, environmental and water runoff, light pollution, traffic, sound pollution, crime, vacant stores are all very likely possibility and there's just no need for it. Um, thank you for your time and your consideration. So uh, please keep Mount Airy a special small town that many other families would like to move to by not rezoning this property from conservation to employment campus. Thank, thank you. you so much. I'm gonna move on now to our next person on the list, Simone Blanchard. If you can please announce yourself and your address, please. Simone Blanchard, you're on the line. I'm 
Okay, I'm going to move to the next person on the list. John Breeding from the town of Mount Airy. <coughs> John Breeding. Hey, hello, uh, Planning Commission members. Thank you for your time. Uh, and just wanted to re reiterate uh, what Mayor Pat was saying uh, about this um, possible rezoning of the parcel 20. Um, again, I think, you know, I had submitted multiple um, um, information to you related to where the town's position is, and, and we're still in that position that we don't feel as though this is uh, uh, the proper timing uh, for this rezoning request. I would think that uh, if you were to wait to the master plan to get rezoned, possibly would be a better opportunity uh, that the town will be through the Harrison Zier annexation at that point in time. and. And that would help quickly uh, allow for a more um, collective uh, uh, direction for the town and the county together. So uh, I also received something from Mayor Pat here. Uh, so why? The... Yeah. So again, just you know, adding adding to an employment park, um, an extra hundred acres. Ultimately, access is a big concern for me, and also lack of infrastructure uh, the town is not looking to uh, provide any kind of infrastructure uh, for that parcel uh, now or even in the future so my concern is if uh, uh, rezoning that would be detrimental to the owners of the property and possibly uh, to the county so I do appreciate all your time again and uh, look forward to talking to you soon thank you Okay, the next speaker I have on my list is Lou Talk. If you can please identify yourself and your address, please. Uh, hello, this is Lewis Talk. My address is 6565 Gisana Court in Sykesville. Um, I, I own an adjoining property to the north of the subject property. And as was discussed earlier, um, I'm aware of the, the large uh, Harris Leisure property to the south. And I, I, I guess I'm not advocating for approval or not, but I just want uh, the commission to consider if there is adequate demand for these two large parcels in this employment campus zone. Um, I think that the point's already been made that the, the Harris Leisure property should probably get integrated into the town before you tack on another 100 acre parcel without kind of seeing how these two parcels interact with each other. Um, so again, I'm not trying to advocate one way or the other. I just don't know that it's it's the right time right now. So if um, I think that's something to consider. Thank you. The next person on my list is Scott Sims. Please identify yourself and your address, please. Sorry, I was just coming off mute. Um, so I live in uh, the Fallen Green neighborhood uh, that is just a, uh, adjacent to that. Um, <clears throat> the parcels that are being considered. And I think really, I mean, to kind of echo a lot of things that have been said are a, um, you know, we have a really special place here in Mount Airy and to pack something like uh, a campus like that into where we live um it, it's it's just going to be difficult and 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 again the infrastructure is going to be you know difficult to do as well and i think the 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 main thing too is uh 27 is is already you know a very difficult place to you know literally like two o'clock in the afternoon right now it's uh, it, it's difficult to get just out of falling green so I just I don't see the need for it because I mean I go to Lisbon I go to um, the local the, literally the local Walmart there's there's so much retail space available that is sitting there I don't really see the need for a additional retail or or not just retail but just 
and any um, any business organization that you know is is interesting interested in doing business in in Mount Airy. So I I don't see the need for it. Um, and that's that, that's kind of it. Just doesn't make sense to me when I when I look at it from a from a, a high level perspective. But um, again, I I appreciate the, the time here, and um, just glad to have a voice. And um, I'll 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 pass the ball to um, next person. All right, thank you for your comments. The last person I have on my list, and we'll go back to the three that um, do not announce themselves. Uh, Diana and Diana, I do not have a last name. If you can give us your first and last name and your address, please. Diane's here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, uh, my name is Diane Perney. I live on Butler Road in Mount Airy. I am a resident of Carroll County for at least 30 years. I um, am going to be against this rezoning as I will be with the Harrison Lyshear rezoning. Um, I wondered when the county decided that they would prefer to put this employment campus all over the county um, and not bring this to the residents. I don't think any residents in Carroll County want employment campuses outside their home. I know that there are public meetings, but nobody ever tells the public in writing anywhere that we're going to change zonings. The land that you're looking at now is conservation land. How can we keep getting rid of conservation land? I understand the need for a tax base, raise my taxes. I moved to Carroll County because I like the county and the atmosphere in the county. I don't want to become Germantown. I don't want to become Randallstown. I don't want to become Columbia. If I wanted that, I would move there. Um, these virtual meetings are not easy for people to get involved with. I had to ask three, four different people how to even dial into this meeting. So public comment is not being heard on these uh, annexations or these uh, changes in zoning. Um, I just wanna say that traffic is already horrendous on 27 as it is on 26. And I do not, I am not for this and if you need me to put something in writing, I definitely will. Remember, there's voters who are sitting here and we are a strong group of voters. Believe you me, we will be watching this. So thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna go back to the three that were not responsive. Dale Rice, Dale Rice, if you're on the line and you'd like to comment, All right, Marianne Costa, you'd like to comment? Yes, yes Marianne Costa, if you'd like to go ahead and give a comment. Yes, I would like to give a comment. Thank you very much for taking my call and, and calling me the second time. I appreciate that. Um, I have a few things to say. The first is um, I watched the last monthly meet meeting on August 18th, and I watched how the, how the Zoning Commission had spent time thinking about this piece of property. Um, I live in Falling Green on Wheat Miller Court, and I noticed that, you, that the time dedicated to this was less than 10 minutes. The photo that was shown of the community was only of the split rail fence. Next to 27, it did not depict the 44 houses that are in Falling Green or the other residential houses that are south of Falling Green or across from Falling Green. I think the whole analysis was shallow, and I have a few things to say about that. The first thing is, is that I think that this, that this rezoning would have a huge environmental impact. There are wetlands and wildlife on that property. There's also the traffic impact. Right now, 27 is already suffering with rush hour traffic and a high volume of tractor trailers. I've noticed on numerous times, taking careful statistical notes, that one in six drivers is looking at their phone. 
and there's traffic accidents and fatalities are piling up every single year. And the resident, our local residents continue to bear the brunt of the risk and the inconvenience attempting to make a left out of falling green onto 27. This would be a far scarier experience if an employment campus was put in there. That road is not built to support an employment campus. The, the fourth point I'd like to bring up here is that there's a disruption to the community balance. Everywhere in the surrounding area is resident, or residential homes. There are no employment campuses in the area. It would throw us out of balance. The fifth point I'd like to point out is the lack of demand for office space. If you've done recent studies as I have and you've, and you've looked, you've noticed that there would, there's already been a 14.4% decline in office space through the second quarter of 2020. That's not even bringing into the full impact of COVID-19. At this time, I'm, I'm, I work for a very large tech company and I work out of my home. There is no need for me to travel with this technology. I cannot imagine anyone's going to be traveling seven minutes up 27 and thinking, wow, I'm really happy an employment campus is here. It is not needed. Our times have changed. You need to go back and take another look at analysis because COVID-19 has completely driven a paradigm shift. My sixth point is water. It's my understanding that the lesser Harrison property could produce 200,000 gallons of water a day. But this happens to us. What is the impact? to the residential wells in the surrounding areas and when these aquifers and when the aquifers are attacked. And if so, what remediation will the county provide to the surrounding houses when our wells run dry? The seventh point, the seventh point I'd like to bring up is reduced property values. Once that goes in there, it's going to change the complete residential property values and property taxes will go down. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. I want you to go back and carefully reconsider it in this day and time. I understand that this plan was put into place many years ago, but it's not relevant now that we're Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, Simone Blanchard, do we hit you too? Simone Blanchard. All right, with that, we have no more uh, comments for this particular property. Thank you, Linda. Cynthia, I, I have a couple of comments or thoughts. I, I know, and, and I really wanna hear everybody else's thoughts as well, but I'll just throw this out here. I know we've had previous discussions about the fact that you know, I understand that the underlying land use is employment campus, and I get that, and I respect that, that that's what the underlying land use is. But again, we've had this conversation before that just because the underlying land use is employment campus, you know, that is coming from the master plan, which is looking out 30 years. That does not mean that at this point in time, we have to change the zoning. And I kind of am feeling a little bit in the direction that we should maybe not under the concept that it maybe just is not ready to happen yet. Uh, based off of some of the things that the town has said, uh, there's a lot of property to the south of this that has not been digested yet. I think it might make sense to kind of see how that comes about, how that develops before we potentially change the zoning here. So I understand that the land use is employment campus, I get it. But that doesn't mean, as we've said before, we have to change the zoning at this point in time. And that's kind of the direction I'm leading, uh, leaning, uh, though I am very open to being persuaded otherwise, uh, but I'll throw that out there as kind of my initial thought and and full disclosure i was not here neither jeff or i was here the on the 18th when we first discussed it but having reviewed everything today and read all the comments that we received and listened to some of the comments uh tonight that's kind of the direction i'm leaning i'm gonna say i agree i guess my main concern is the concern that the town has and and to me I think when we originally put this in, in the master plan, thinking back to this, it was more of an extension of the town and, and that whole area and the vision of that area. And if the town of Mount Airy is concerned with it, 
and I don't think we're fulfilling their their vision of what and and we certainly don't want to fruition the, the concerns they may have with development of a property to the south. I, I agree um, with Dan and Cynthia. The, uh, I'm concerned about the town not even wanting us to this rezoning, and it probably it would be better to wait through the annexation and see how that goes first. So this yes. is uh, go ahead, Jean. I think you're I, muted. This is Janice. Oh, okay, Janice. So I agree. Um, as I listened to the mayor, I thought he was making some very valid points. And I tend to think that we should probably wait on this. Yeah, this is James. Uh, I agree with all my uh, fellow commissioners. Uh, it, there's there's no downside to not making a decision now, and and, and you know, I always live by the fact: never make a decision until you have to. And I don't think this is the time to do this. Let's just let it sit for a while. As far as the employment campus goes, I can't remember how the employment campus ended up in Mount Airy, and I don't want to get into that discussion. That that won't serve any purpose. But uh, it. Uh, I just don't see it needed at this time. Well, so, I mean, oh, uh, I'm sorry, go on, go on. Well, this is Jeff. So I came in tonight uh, leaning toward um, a favorable finding. Uh, anybody who watches this knows I'm a fan of employment campuses. We're looking at this in a 10 year horizon. I certainly understand that uh, with COVID going on, there's probably a surplus of commercial space right now, but over the next 10 years, who knows? Uh, what's going to happen. Um, I think we've wanted to try to uh, permit opportunities for white collar jobs within the county. We know the statistics of the number of people that exit the county every day to go to work. Uh, so there's a lot to um, a, a lot to offer with employment campuses and we know they can be very attractive. Lots of open space, lots of uh, nice looking landscaping, you know, protecting the environment and all of that. Um, but I think tonight's a good example for those that think we know, don't listen to the community, I was persuaded. Um, I was persuaded by uh, each of the speakers. I thought they raised good points. And as my colleagues have said, um, you know, this is something that the town has to embrace. And it looks like they've got their hands full on the Southern side um, of this. And so I think we let this, um, we don't go forward with the employment campus. We leave it conservation. We revisit it at the next master plan and uh, see how, how things are looking. At this point, the next master plan is uh, only four years away, I guess. <laughs> so we'll be looking at that uh, before we know it. So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm coming down with the rest of you. Well, with all that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion um, that we forward a unfavorable recommendation to the county commissioners in regards to this property. I'll second that motion. All right, we have a motion from Mr. Hoff with a second by Mr. Canale for an unfavorable recommendation for the rezoning of EC 13-2020-0030. Mr. Canale? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Ms. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Soison? Yes. Mr. Wathers? Yes. Let the record reflect that five are in favor and the motion carries for an unfavorable recommendation. So if I can have the um, screen sharing back again, I'm going to go over the other properties for the evening. Hey, Linda, before you move on, I just I do want to share, Jeff, you made a very valid point um, about the work you as a commissioner are doing and listening to the community, um, saying you don't know it all and have the opportunity for the community to reach out to us, not just this evening, but a continuing dialogue really helps. And uh, and I really showed um, in the discussion that you had uh, amongst all of you. So just wanted to share that to you as I see this and as I continue to work and share that with the community as well. So thanks. Thank you. All right, the next property is C 
C104202027, Playtime Corporation. The request is from AG to C1. The future land use of this property is agriculture and it is located along Baltimore Boulevard, but access to the property is off Old Westminster Pike. The property is in the 2014 Carroll County Master Plan amended. It has a future land use designation of agriculture, as I just said, and this request is not consistent with this future land use designation. The request is not consi consistent with the 2014 master plan or other applicable plans. Inconsistency with the master plan and presumption of correctness of the master plan are the two main reasons for this unfavorable recommendation. In addition, this property is in the upper Patapsco rural legacy area. Although the property is not currently in ag use, it is a legally operating commercial use as permitted by section 158070D of the county code and may continue as such indefinitely. It may also be used for a number of other non-agricultural uses, both residential and commercial as set forth in 158070D and E. Changing this property from ag zoning to C1 would allow the additional commercial uses in the C1 district in an area which is surrounded by ag zone land and large lot residential properties that was not envisioned by the plan again. This property also is in the Liberty Reservoir watershed area, and you have the information regarding that from the Reservoir Technical Committee. The department received one phone call in support, and Price Wagner is on the line if you'd like any more details with regard to that phone conversation. And I sent one written comment this evening in opposition to this property. So again, the request is to go to C1, at August 18th, the Planning Commission gave this an unfavorable provisional recommendation. And we have no callers on the line that I know of that um, regarding this property. Chris, has anyone joined us since we produced the list? I haven't heard anything. No, I haven't gotten anything new. Okay, so there is no additional comments. <clears throat> at, this, at this point, I see no reason to change the zoning. Um, I totally agree with the uh, assessment summary. I I agree. This is Jeff. I agree with that <clears throat> as well. I wasn't here at the last meeting, but having reviewed everything, I agree with what the uh, the rest of you all did last time with the unfavorable record. <laughs> Would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, this is <clears throat> this is Jeff. I'll make a motion uh, that we forward this to the county commissioners with an unfavorable recommendation. I second. So we have a motion by Mr. Walters with a second by Ms. Kirshner for an unfavorable recommendation for C104-2020-007. Mr. Kanadi? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Ms. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Soison? Yes. Ms. Mr. Walters? Yes. Let the record reflect that the motion carries for an unfavorable recommendation. The next property is I2112020023, Finch Services Incorporated. The request is from Ag to I2. This property was rezoned comprehensively as part of the earlier mapping changes when we moved properties from their existing BNR and BG and IR and IG to the corresponding I1 and I2 districts. So the front portion of this property along Maryland 31 New Windsor Road was moved into its appropriate industrial category because the front portion of this property was zoned IG. The request is for the remaining portion to the rear of the property as outlined in the blue with the tan interior. This property, as I said, is split zones with the requested portion 
in the designated agricultural area of the 2014 master plan as amended. The interior portion is actually within the uh, Westminster uh, Municipal Growth Area. This request is not consistent with the future land use in the master plan. It's inconsistency with the master plan, as we've said before, and the presumption of correctness of the master plan are the two main reasons for this unfavorable recommendation. The I-2 district, which is requested, is intended to provide locations for activities characterized by heavy manufacturing, refining, processing, or compounding of materials. The uses associated with this district are intensive and frequently include operations that emit strong odors, loud noises, and some volume of dust, vibration, smoke, soot, vapors, and light pollution. While the property is in the vicinity of an industrial corridor, the permitted I-2 uses may not be compatible with the agricultural uses on the surrounding properties. Furthermore, this lies within the Little Pipe Creek Rural Legacy Area. This property is also the subject of case, a BZA case 726 for a conditional use to permit the establishment of a bituminous concrete mixing plant. This was in May, 1972, so over 48 years ago, and it was denied. The department has received one phone call and five email comments in opposition to this particular rezoning request in one letter of support from the county's economic development. These are all in your packet. So I do believe we have callers on the line this evening wishing to give comments on this property. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and call the first public speaker, and that would be uh, Mr. John McGuire. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is John McGuire, and uh, I don't not sure whether Linda mentioned it, but this uh, proposal did get a, a favorable provisional recommendation from the Planning Commission uh, in round one. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is, since I'm, I'll be short on time, is uh, summarize the presentation that I made uh, the last time. Uh, I think that the letter from Jack Lyburn at the Economic Development Office speaks for itself as to the need and the uh, the need for this industrial land and the appropriateness at this location, which is in an existing uh, industrial corridor with great uh, public road access onto the State Route 31. Uh, but I would turn my attention to the test of consistency uh, consistency under the land use article section 1303 uh, requires you to look at policies and development patterns. I think the development pattern is uh, uh, can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, sorry, I heard some uh, feedback. Uh, the uh, development pattern is clear. It's already in an industrial corridor that is uh, partially developed even at this point. The policies, of course, are found in the master plan. Under goal 13, one of the goals is providing land appropriately located and zoned for a variety of and types of intensities of new economic development activities. Uh, and going through the various provisions uh, of the master plan, which I did in more detail in my original uh, presentation. On page 10 of the master plan, the plan goal is for commercial industrial uses to increase from 12% to a minimum of 15% of the tax base. Uh, on page 20 of the master plan, uh, one of the suggestions made by the Board of County Commissioners to meet these goals was to seek out and propose additional employment land by working with private property owners that consent to the rezoning, which of course is the case uh, in this matter. Uh, on page 125 of the master plan, the county must ensure that its industrial zone land is the most ideal land possible in terms of location, suitability for development, and the provision of services and access, which uh, Mr. Lyburn spoke to in terms of the appropriateness. Uh, also, the uh, previous study that the master plan was based on listed certain criteria for identifying this type of land, parcels within one mile of a major highway, which certainly applies, parcels greater than 25 acres, which apply, would, would apply here, 
and parcels that are now vacant, which also applies. Uh, reading on to page 135, more than 75% of the properties designated for commercial or industrial uses are five acres or smaller, and almost 29% are only one acre in size. The lack of large parcels limits the development of campus employment sites and other large scale users. Uh, and that leads to the implementation strategy, uh, the zone adequate commercial industrial employment campus land to increase the non-residential economic tax base. And uh, to wrap up, we think that there's, uh, to wrap up, we think that there's adequate uh, support in the master plan that this is in fact consistent with the master plan. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Brian Holtz. If you can identify yourself and give your name and address for the record, please. Yes, hi, my name is Brian Holtz. I live at 839 Medford Road, uh, which borders um, the agricultural portion of the property. Um, I, um, I first want to say I agree with the other callers regarding the lack of posted notice for review and, um, and public comment notification. Um, there really should be posting so people can can understand how to connect and speak in these meetings um, and to give them time to pull together their thoughts and stuff. Um, a sign I think just went up today regarding the meeting in October with the commissioners. Um, I agree with the zoning staff recommendations to not move forward with approving this change of zoning. Uh, within less than a mile of the property, matter of fact, the property borders some of the other industrial land there is approximately 150 acres of undeveloped industrial land. And this has been so for decades. And at least the 35 years that I've lived here, there has been little to no additional development with the result that there still is significant amount of land for industrial development that's already zoned industrial. Develop, development along this strip of Route 31 um, does look to be congru congruent with the 2014 Rev 2019 master plan. That's the portion that is already zoned I-2. Access to the ag portion of this property is on a small rural road, it is on small rural roads and the additional traffic on these types of roads would pose congestion and safety issues. In addition to this, houses um, in this area already have concerns with their water supply in the nearby quarry. I myself have a 35 foot well and additional water usage up the hill for me by potential industrial development with no connection to city water could further jeopardize my water supply and the others who live nearby, um, as well as lower the property values um, for all the surrounding houses. The fact that there still remains a large amount of acreage that is still to be developed reinforces part of the recommendation from the staff to leave the 36 acres of agricultural zone property as it is. The portion of this property that is zoned agricultural is surrounded on three sides by land that the taxpayers of Carroll County have paid good money to be put into land preservation. This land is also in the Little Pipe Creek Rural Legacy Area whose designation was sponsored by the Carroll County Commissioners for protecting the Monocacy River watershed. 36 acres of this property is surrounded by land in the agricultural preservation, is in Little is in the Little Pipe Creek Rural Legacy Area, is outside of the Westminster Growth Area, shows no plan to bring water or sewer to the property, borders one registered historic property and is adjacent to additional historic properties. The change of zoning to I-2 is really incongruent with, with these aspects of the property. Based on this, I'm not in agreement to move forward with the approval of the change. I'm against the change and would like to see the zoning commission uh, follow the staff recommendations of unfavorable and not move forward with this change. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holtz. And I have no one else on my list this evening to speak to this. Do you have any other callers? I have no one additional sign up. Okay, thank you. So there's no additional speakers on the line for this property. Okay, um, I'm. This is a property I, I'm, uh, or a, a case that I'm a little bit passionate about, or have strong feelings about because I grew up in the New Windsor area, 
Matter of fact, I grew up on a property that bordered 31 as well as Old New Windsor Road. So very, very familiar with the property. And here is my concern with giving this a favorable re, um, a favorable recommendation. Is 31, you know, from when I was a child, was always had a sort of commercial industrial feel and designed to be that way. And so, you know, the portion of this property that's along 31, I totally get why it has that commercial designation. I could even buy, you know, if the zoning line came a little bit further up into the property, I'd be willing to consider that depending on the circumstances. What I have a lot of heartburn is, is that Old New Windsor Road is a very different type of road. That is a country road that has some dwellings along it and is surrounded with farms everywhere. A lot of farms that are in ag preservation. And I have a lot of heartburn that simply because the zoning splits this property, we are going to allow that zoning to go all the way up to Old New Windsor Road. Because the reality is they don't have great access along 31. Mefford and 31 is not a great intersection. So if we allow that industrial zone to come all the way up to Old New Windsor Road, that's more likely where they're going to put the access in. And that's going to totally change the character and vibe of, of Old New Windsor Road. And I am just totally, I know I wasn't here on the 18th, but having reviewed everything and some of the public comments that we received kind of tie in line with what I'm saying, I do not like this whatsoever, and I feel very passionately that we should have an unfavorable request um, or unfavorable recommendation on this. I do not like the zoning, industrial heavy zone, zoning going all the way to Old New Windsor Road, thereby changing the character of Old New Windsor Road and the fact that it's basically an old country road with a lot of farms along it and and predominated by ag, ag preservation. So I, that's my feelings. I'm open to obviously comments, but I'm kind of passionate on this one. Well, I think, so this property has quite a bit of frontage. Um, it's a split property, but what you're talking about is that small portion down to the south, but it's still part of the larger property. So they have quite a bit of frontage on a 31. So um, in some way, it's maybe not maybe not taking it all the way up to New Windsor, Old New Windsor Road may not be appropriate, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure whatever how everybody else feels. I mean, it is surrounded by AgPres for a re so. This is uh, Jeff. I, I am troubled a little bit by the fact that <clears throat> it is uh, surrounded by agriculture. I think the fact that it's near industrial is not really enough uh, for me, at least, to say let's, let's extend the industrial area out into this area that is predominantly agriculture. Um, I guess at the end of the day, I, I agree with the, uh, with the staff report. I don't I don't think it is consistent with the uh, master plan. Um, I know Mr. McGuire mentioned that he thought it was consistent with goal 13, but I'm more troubled by 14 and 15, which deal with different issues. Um, and they're set forth in the, in the master, I mean, in the uh, staff report. Um, so I, I come down on the side that I, I really do agree with the staff report. I, I, I think it, I think we should have an unfavorable ruling. Or recommendation on this one. I think the other issue is that there's a lot of industrial land there right now, which obviously isn't used. Um, I don't know if there's any development there, but I'm not sure that there is. So I don't see a, a big reason to expand that industrial area at this point. Well, with all that said, I'm going to make a motion 
that we forward a unfavorable recommendation on this request. This is Jeff Hall. Second that motion. All right, we have a motion by Mr. Hall for the second by Mr. Walters for an unfavorable recommendation for I-2-11-2020-0023. Mr. Canale? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Soison? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. Please let the record reflect that five are in favor of the uh, motion and the unfavorable recommendation carries. And our last property for this evening is C103. 2020-0027, North Carroll Community School. The request is from Ag to C1. The property is located close to the intersection of Maryland 97, Littlestown Pike, and Old Stone Road. Its future land use designation is agricultural. This request is not consistent with the 2014 Carroll County Master Plan as amended or other applicable plans. As we've stated in prior cases, consistency with the master plan and its presumption of correctness are two of the main reasons for the unfavorable recommendation. Although the property is not currently in ag use, it is a legally operating commercial use as permitted by section 158.070D of the county code. It may also be used for a number of other non-agricultural uses, both residential and commercial set forth in the code as well. Changing this property from ag zoning to C1 would allow all the additional commercial uses in the section of 158082 of the county code on this property. This area is in a priority preservation area for Carroll County, is surrounded by ag zone land, is protected by and protected land and large lot residential properties. It was not envisioned by the 2014 amended or as amended in 2019 master plan. No additional information was requested regarding this property, and we have received no public comments for this property. Um, Chris, I believe you did say there was a caller on the line. So if there is a caller on the line, um, please identify yourself for this property if you wish to get comment on this property. Does not seem like we have anyone on the line for comment. Their mic is open, but I'm not hearing them. That's all we have. Okay. When we discussed this the last time for a provisional, um, I was pretty much conflicted at that time. But then I started looking at some of the, uh, especially the property um, south of nine, on 91, which was C2072020, and it was 0023. And that property we gave a, an unfavorable, and it's very similar. The assessment was very similar to the assessment on this one. So I think we need to have some consistency on some of this also. So I'm I'm in favor of an unfavorable. You're in favor of staff's recommendation of unfavorable, right, Richard? That is correct. Okay. I, I, I put in too many favorables, unfavorables. Okay. I And on the one that you were referring to, the one off of 97, which ended in 22, 0022, if, if you all remember, I was very passionate that we do change that one. Um, but in this case, because we made the determination on that one not to change it, I kind of feel like we need to be consistent. And to me, this is a very similar scenario, but to me, less compelling 
than the situation that ended in zero zero two two. So I kind of feel like, you know, I don't know how as a planning commission or a group that we could deny the the one that we denied and then say yes to this one. I feel like we're being, you know, incoherent uh, if we do that. So I'm kind of with Richard on this one. I am more in the unfavorable camp just because of being consistent with the group's decision with the one that we did earlier. So that's a convoluted way of saying that I'm, I'm on the same page with you, Richard, just for the sake of consistency. So this is Jeff. I, I uh, also, for me, the more important factors are that the future land use is agriculture. And as I look around, it, it looks like to me, this would be an island of commercial in a sea of agriculture, um, just plopped right there in the middle. And I have a hard time uh, thinking from a, a zoning standpoint that that's, uh, that's the, the best way to go. It just wouldn't be consistent with the, with the land, with the zoning around it. Um, so I, I agree with the staff report on this as well. I, as to recommending on favor. Good point about the C of zoning. Yes. Well, hearing no one else, uh, I would make a recommendation that we uh, submit a unfavorable recommendation to the committee. I'll second. We have a motion by Mr. Soy Sam with a second by Mr. Hoff for unfavorable recommendation for C103 2020 0027. All right, Mr. Canale? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. Ms. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Soyson? Yes. Mr. Wathers? Yes. Please let the record reflect that five are in favor of the unfavorable recommendation and that motion carries. That is the last property for review this evening. Our next meeting is October 7th, which will conclude the by request comprehen comprehensive rezoning planning commission recommendations. We have six properties on the agenda for next week. Um, and that was the request from Schaefer and Linda, you, you, you muted yourself. We can't hear you. Sorry about that. So we'll be having the final staff reports and you'll be taking your motions for final recommendation. And we do have public comment um, already lined up for that meeting. And hopefully it goes as smoothly as it did tonight. And great suggestion by Planning Commission to put that on the agenda. I think tonight went very smoothly. Yeah, I think tonight went, went very well. I agree. The public comments were great and, and handled in a very professional uh, way. So I'm, then, I'm, I'm thrilled. Yeah, I think the sign up was a met, was a huge success. I agree. And, and I, I do sympathize with people trying to call in, you know, this, this virtual uh, meetings is very difficult. Um, I don't know how we could, I'm, I'm not sure how we can make it any easier, but I'm sure it's frustrating trying to get uh, call in. But those emails and letters, you know, we do all read them. So I, I really encourage people, you know, a lot of our decisions tonight were impacted by the public comment that we received. Um, you know, because when we did the first round, we were kind of in a provisional nature and really kind of wanting to get additional comments. Because so, sometimes when you rethink about things, you look at it differently. And so those public comments are, are really key. And I really appreciate the ones in writing because then I can really read through them and digest them. I also want to compliment, compliment those that offered the comments tonight. We get, you know, comments come in all kinds of flavors, um, but they were civil, they were respectful. I found them persuasive. It's much easier to hear a comment when it's presented the way it was presented. These were presented tonight. Um, I understand people have a lot of passion. I totally get that. Um, but when people have come to us and, and it's angry or there are personal attacks on us, I still try to listen to what they're saying, but it just adds a lot of noise to that. And uh, the folks that were on the line tonight, I just want to say thank you for being professional and civil 
and thoughtful and honoring the time limits. It's, it's easy to stay focused for three minutes um, and it gives everybody a fair shot at coming in and having the same opportunity. So I just want to say thanks for that. It was, it was really helpful to me. Amen to that. I'm like, I agree. I'm very delighted with the way the meeting went tonight and uh, I share everybody else's thoughts. One thing that still bothers me that, that keeps nagging at me and I'm not sure we addressed it and I'm not sure how to address it, but there are just so many comments about the notices being out too late. Uh, I, you know, we, we need to do, verify that those comments were correct. And if they are correct, then quite honestly, we have to fix that. And, uh, I'm not sure how, but, uh, so just sure. the process has always been that we send out notifications, emails to the list of people that have been interested in this effort from the very beginning. We started sending out blast messages starting in January. Um, and have sent regular updates regarding this. We have done press releases. We've had coverage within the Carroll County Times. And typically what we have done in the past in the county, we're actually going ahead of schedule and posting comprehensive rezoning physical signs. That's why I believe the gentleman with regard to Finch property said they actually saw a sign posted today because now we have a course of action moving forward for when the County commissioners will begin to review these properties. So we are getting the message out way ahead of time. And I will let you know too, we are going above and beyond as we should state law. State law does not require us to post or notify adjoiners on any comprehensive rezoning. We've also sent out letters to the adjoining properties and then some. So if someone did not receive a letter, please let us know. We'll add you on the list. You may not have been a joiner or within close proximity. So you might have been a mile away and still might be concerned. And we will definitely send you a letter, but I need to know I can't grab thousands of properties, but we sent out over 450 letters for this effort to not just adjoining properties, but ones in close proximity as well. So, oh, sorry. So Linda, so just to be clear, so as part of this process, the process for it coming to us, the adjoiners all got notified. Is that correct? That's my understanding. So every, if I was an adjoiner to one of these requests, I did receive notification. Correct. And we're sending out new notification as a postcard. We sent them a full letter letting them know what we were doing um, throughout this effort. So now we're going to send the postcard saying a public hearing has been scheduled, a listening session. So the Board of County Commissioners is doing two sessions with public comment. So in October, we are actually doing the same thing we did for the Planning Commission in July, on July 7th, I believe. We are going through each property saying, introducing you all 30 properties via brief introduction. Then we are hosting a listening session for the Board of County Commissioners. That listening session will just provide feedback to them about what they've heard for these properties. Then we've scheduled three work sessions to go in detail for each property. After they've already heard comments from the public, then we will go back out for a public hearing and then they will hear further comments based on their provisional approvals. And then we will move forward with discussion and deliberation. Chris is showing now the website. All of this has been posted on our website, the timeline and where we are in the process. Okay, good. I just, because there has been a lot of, and, and I know it's a struggle, Linda, because no matter how much you do, certain people don't hear about it and then they get upset. But it sounds like you have tried to do a lot of outreach. And, and again, this is just the recommendation stage. The county commissioners are the ones making the final decision. And that process hasn't even started yet. And that's what I guess was posted today on some of the properties about that. So they, they most, now that we're at that stage, that's actually getting posted. The properties are getting posted for that. Yes, yeah, so we've been working on posting properties physically. Our goal is to have most of them done by next week, which will be well ahead of the uh, Board of County Commissioners hearing the properties for the first time as the Board I'm of County. So yeah, just, just a, a quick comment about it. And I apologize, I was breaking in and out, but I, I heard most of what you all said, and I definitely got the gist. It is a pet project of mine, and Linda knows this very well, along with Roberta, that we will continue to get better uh, in doing this. Um, 
a lot of times it's not that they're not seeing the information, it's that they're not receiving the information. They're not bringing it in because they already have something, you know, anxiety or frustration already built up. Um, so part of it's to relieve some of that angst and anxiety uh, by just being there and listening um, and being a sounding board many times. Y'all are doing great. I mean, uh, you're, you're seeing the top of the uh, the waterline of the iceberg and Linda and her team have the five, six of that iceberg underneath. And um, it's just, it's a lot of development and continued development in, um, you know, uh, getting the word out. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. Um, you know, I think, you know, Gene, you started it uh, with the comment, you know, how can we do better? I think just continue doing what you're doing. And trust me, that's better. Um, and I think Linda and her team continue doing what they're doing. That's just better. So, yeah, I, that's my two cents on it. it. It's an ongoing issue and it always will be. I, I, I love the idea that you're doing all these things, Linda. And I'm really glad to hear that these are, these signs are being posted because to me, that's the most effective way. And, you know, people are not paying attention to what's going on uh, in county government, but when they see a sign that there's a rezoning that can tell them what they need to do, then they can do it. So to me, the signage is the most important. Just so you know with the signs, we actually had custom printed signs made for this effort. So they are turquoise. They have the comprehensive rezoning logo. We've tried to brand this effort. They're pre-printed with information. Now, I know some people aren't going to like this, but you know, those signs are only so big. That's the best we can do. The handwriting can be small, but what we did make really big was the phone number to call our office, was the information of the actual property. Call us, look on the website. The website's really big. Doesn't matter. I mean, I would have to have a billboard for someone driving by to catch it. The idea is they see something sticking out of the ground and they need to stop for further investigation. Okay, so we do have another meeting next Wednesday. <laughs> so, but uh, well, we're finally wrapping up. It's been a long process. So, well, thank you all for your participation and patience with us and helping us yes. work. We're getting better. We're trying as commissioners, and we're really trying to continue to improve. Yes, thank you for everything you guys do, especially the culmination of the comments each night. That's that's really helpful too. So, motion, make a motion for adjournment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you next week. <laughs>